Welcome back to the Cycling Tips Podcast, everybody. I'm Kaylee Fretz, got James Wong and shoddy Dave Everett along with us. And today we're talking about a potential first for clinchers at the Tour of Flanders, specifically clinchers with tubes in them. James, what are we talking about? Uh, well, seeing as how this is Flanders week here, uh, we we're talking about Casper Asgreen's specialized tarmac that he won uh, that he won Flanders on just like, just yesterday. Uh, and me. yes, the thing the thing that is physically right behind Kaylee right now, <laughs> it is actually right behind him as we speak. My, my hat is not really working. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, point point being the big deal about uh, the tires on this bike are that yes, they are clincher tires. They are uh, specialized 28 millimeter wide hell of the north. Uh, cotton clinchers with latex tubes inside and that's a big deal because these races are have historically been won on tubulars for the last well i mean pretty long time decades i think actually i don't know i'm actually i'm pretty sure it's not necessarily the first time flanders has been won on clinchers Uh, i believe there were at least one or two other times in the 90s i believe Uh, so it's not necessarily first but the fact that is that that is that we have a modern incarnation of the race that has been won on clinchers says a lot about sort of how far the technology has progressed and where teams are looking now to gain some basically some free speed do we think we're going to see more of this i think that's the big question for me because as you say it's it's been i mean tubulars have owned professional racing for a very long time with the exception of a couple races i mean uh was it claudio chiapucci won Tour de France stage and some other things in like 1992 on Michelin highlights. Uh, there's rumor that uh, the 97 edition of Paris Roubaix was won on clinchers uh, by Guedon, and it hasn't been for a very very long time. And the reasons behind that, just to reiterate real quick, is basically because tubulars, if you flat, you can keep riding, and that means that if you're a professional, you get a flat. You see this all the time in races. The, the rider just keeps going, waits for a team car. You lose less time overall. Plus, if you blow out a tire on a descent or something like that, it's not just going to fall off, and you have a slightly better chance of, of keeping yourself upright. Well, and the big thing is with tubulars, you're a lot less you're a lot less likely to pinch flat, uh, which has which is historically the big concern in Calvo the Classics. Um, right. I mean, one thing I should point out, however, is uh, I mean. W- We are talking about Flanders as a cobbled classic, and it is, Um, but it is really important to point out that the cobbles at Flanders are, and we've talked about this before, but the cobbles at Flanders are night and day difference between what you see at Roubaix. And Roubaix, it's like riding across a bunch of cinder blocks that were dropped in the middle of a field somewhere. And and Flanders is more like, I don't know, like kind of like bowling ball-ish, beach ball-ish kind of stones sort of thing. The rocks are smaller and they're closer together is basically, yeah, it's much, much, much easier to ride. And like, you know, there aren't as big, like the holes aren't as big that you fall in and like, you know, the edges aren't quite as sharp, that sort of thing. So it's the sort of race where if you are going to do a cobbled classic on clinchers, then that's a good one to do it at because I think all three of us have done that sportif before. My guess is that all three of us have done them before on clinchers and we're still here. I, I didn't get flat. Um, uh, and I don't, we don't know what kind of pressures Casper Asgreen was running in those tires. Um, I mean, our guess is that he was running fairly close to what he would have been riding in years past. Um, also important to note that while Flanders is full of cobbles, it's not all cobbles. It's not like it's cobbles from start to finish. It's mostly decent paved roads uh, and, and with a bunch of cobbled sections. So it'd be much more notable if someone on that team or some specialized rider in general, one on clinchers at Roubaix than at Flanders. Should we talk about sort of how this came to be? Why they are running clinchers? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a, I'm not going to say a complicated story, but basically Roval, who makes the wheels, and James, correct me if I get any of these bits wrong here. Roval, who makes the wheels, uh, they came out with a, with a new, both a deep wheel and a shallow wheel. So the deep wheel, which is the one that's right behind me here, is called the Rapide CLX, and there's a shallower one called the Alpinist CLX. And both, even though they look like they would take a tubeless tire, they have the shelf and everything. It's what we would normally see from a tubeless tire. They are apparently not tubeless compatible. And we've been kind of confused by this since they came out. And as a result, the team doesn't really have any choice. They don't make a, a tubular version anymore. And they're not tubeless compatible. And so they've been kind of forced into a traditional 
clincher with a tube in it, which is, as we said, basically what most amateurs are riding around on, right? Did, did I get that right? Is that... Is that spot on? I would say that's pretty accurate. And when when you say that we're confused by this, it's more like it just feels like there's more to this story than we really know. Um, but yes, I mean, the, the, these wheels, when they came out, they they certainly look tubeless compatible. And uh, and actually, I've, I've gotten messages from uh, you know one or two readers that point to now outdated product pages that were on some sort of regional specialized website that stated that they were tubeless compatible. So that had obviously so they been were corrected. At some point. <laughs> Seemingly. Um, but anyway, they are not officially tubeless compatible. So yes, I mean, the teams basically have no choice. I mean, they can run tubulars if they want to, but they would be doing so on old wheels that they know are slower. Um, so one thing that's nice about clinchers and the reason why there has been so much renewed focus on clinchers and tubeless clinchers uh, in general, as opposed to tubulars, despite the fact that they are heavier, we have a lot of data that shows that they roll quite a bit faster. Um, we did a deep dive episode with folks from the team and Reval uh, and Specialized. And supposedly, I think they said that they there, there was like a 12 watt savings at race pace, I think, relative to their old tubulars, which is absolutely enormous and that's a huge huge number um maybe not terribly significant to everyday riders like the three of us here um but if you are casper asgreen and you're fighting for the win at flanders 12 watts is a big number huge number um, of watts no you got you got to wonder how happy the mechanics are as well because gluing tubulars on isn't exactly the easiest job going but the coin at quick step have got quite a few mechanics who have been around the block quite a long time so they're going to be stuck in their ways and want to do the same thing time and time again so you've got to wonder if they're they're pleased with the technology as well if they're trusting in the technology is um that little bit more confident building now now they've got that win behind them well i mean i don't i don't know how confident they are behind the scenes but i mean when we did you know we did have a a a mechanic from the team on that podcast episode and if only just based on what they were saying i my guess is that they're probably pretty happy about it because they had said that whereas before it would take it would take the mechanics a week to glue all these tires now they can do everything in a day so i mean it's a it's a huge time savings I mean, if you, if you, I mean, a a team would typically have, you know, maybe three mechanics working on this, on any sort of, any sort of job kind of thing. And let's just say it was three. And let's just say those three mechanics now saved, let's just say four or five days each. I mean, that's 12, 15 days that they now have to spend on other things. Like, I don't know, probably fishing hydraulic hoses and wires through an internally routed (laughs) frame, which they probably need that time for. Why do you yeah, think bikes and cells have gotten more difficult? So it all it all probably evens out in the end. Why do you think it's taken so long to come to this point in where the technology they're comfortable to use this technology? Because I remember Domo Farm Fritz using I think it was the Michelin Pro Race at the Tour de France and really pushing to use them. Uh, yeah, back in that's got to be early 2000s, and then it all fizzled out, all went back to tu- um, tubular. <laughs> and I mean, then, obviously, now back to where we are. The, the clinchers have gotten legitimately better in in recent years, and we have a lot more data. We have a lot more testing as far as rolling resistance and grip and all these other things go. And the reality is tubulars really haven't changed very much in really quite a long time. I mean, companies have gotten quite good at making them, Um you know, like Continental, for example, I mean, they do a really good job of offering various teams custom formulations of, you know, different treads and different reinforcements, different casing types and all this other things for, for tubulars. Like you'll see little letters like, you know, ALX and like, you know, you'll see these little three letter designations for things. And uh, I talked to Continental, Continental, uh, I talked to them about this a while ago, and those three letters do designate different sort of custom, custom, you know, requests that different customers have for things, you know, for, for teams specifically. Um, but so anyway, I mean, but aside from that, tubulars really haven't changed a ton. Whereas with clinchers, there has been so much energy put into the development of not just the tires, but also the associated wheels. Like for these, for these Roval wheels, um, I mean, Kaylee, you, you've ridden them. I've ridden these, these, uh, those, those rapides, that front one in particular with that super, super fat external width. I mean, I, I, maybe this was in my head, but I mean, 
those that, that wheel seemed just wicked fast. I mean, just, it, it just seemed like it was definitely quicker and more efficient than some other ones that I've used. And it it, it kind of goes along with this trend of going with a super wide wheel with a somewhat narrower tire. But only in this case, you know, I don't know how how that twenty eight mil tire would really puff up in you know in in an actual width because we weren't there. I, I can't I can't measure them at the moment. Um, but my guess is that they were still quite a bit faster than the narrower tubular setup that they had before, even though the tubular setup would have been lighter, I think. So at the Tour de France last year, Julian Alphilippe won the second stage on basically an identical setup here. Uh, not the Hell of the North version of the Turbo Cotton, the regular Turbo Cotton, because there was no cobbles on the second stage of last year's Tour de France, but a very similar setup. He then switched back to tubulars for most of the rest of the race. And we basically heard that that was because, you know, he had some GC ambitions. He was, uh, when you have GC ambitions, just sort of what I was talking about earlier, the ability to ride a flat, things like that, you might lose less time if you get a flat. That became more important than the X number of watts that, watts that they think they would save. But this year, we've seen these Rapide and Turbo Cotton combinations basically every single race from uh, De Koenig Quickstep and Bora Hansgrohe, who are both on the same setups. They haven't switched back to tubulars very often. I've been sort of scrolling through the, you know, the photos that we get in and haven't spotted them anywhere as of yet. Uh, I'm sure that they've, at some point, someone has ridden one this year. But for the most part, they're on these clinchers full time. So do we think that this is a trend that's going to continue? Do we think that both clinchers with tubes in them, which for a long time was, you know, it was a pariah in the professional peloton, and tubeless which is showing up on some other teams at the moment. Uh, EF, for example, is running tubeless with those new little uh, foam inserts inside. Do we think that, you know, clinchers of some type, whether it's tubeless or tubed, are they going to fully take over in the next couple of years? I think they are. Um, and we, you know, I know um, Dave Rome wrote an article about this not too long ago uh, in a discussion with Josh Portner. Um, I actually have something in the works right now. I'm just waiting to hear back from a couple of companies. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now. The tubulars are dead, at least as far as top tier road racing go. I mean, it, it's done because there are an increasing number of companies who are just no longer putting development resources into new tubular wheels. Um, and I think we'll still see them in cyclocross because tubeless tires just don't stay on a rim as well when there's just not very much pressure in them, uh, which is the case with socket cross tires. But as far as on the road goes, uh, as far as that, as, as far as the road goes, tubulars, we, we have, again, all this data, despite the fact that they are still lighter. So we might see them in climbing stages, perhaps. Um, but modern high end clinchers, whether they be uh, tube type with latex tubes or, uh, or a really nice tubeless clincher, they have much less rolling resistance than a high-end tubular. So given the data, you are just not going to see a lot more development time put into tubulars. I mean, unless somehow, you know, tubular technology can advance to the point where the rolling resistance can match that of a, a latex tubed clincher or a tubeless clincher, you're just not going to see it anymore. But I think right now, given the convenience factor, given the fact that with these tubeless tire bed shapes, we do now have less worry about a tire just instantly peeling off a rim if it goes flat um, with things like these you know, foam inserts and stuff like that. Um, I have a hard time thinking that the trend is going to even plateau or reverse in the other direction. I do think we're going to see a lot more clinchers and tubeless. I'm sorry, tubeless. <laughs> I do think we're going to see a lot more tube type clinchers and tubeless clinchers moving forward and fewer tubulars. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I mean, I still really, I still really like a good tubular. You know, it's the I, end I of an era. In a while, but yeah, it's the end of an era, and they do ride incredibly well. Um, there, there, there is something to that super round cross section and like you know a really nice cotton casing tubular tire. Um, but honestly, a, a, a cotton open tubular, um, otherwise known as you know. A cotton casing clincher with just the with just the tread glued on instead of having a vulcanized tire um but that sort of setup with a latex tube it really doesn't feel that different and you don't have to glue it on the rim so that's very true kind yeah, of hard to I've argue ridden, with that i've ridden this exact setup that is behind me the same setup that casper has uh won on over the weekend and yeah it's super nice it feels really really good feels i will say basically like a tubular so there you have it 
the uh, the old school among us might be a little bit sad about this, but uh, you know, progress marches on, I suppose. That's it from us today. Thanks for watching. As always, hit subscribe so you never miss a video, and hit like down there. Let us know what you think in the comments of clinchers returning to the front of the Tour of Flanders for the first time in 30-ish years.